Hey folks, it's Van Jungbeck again and today I want to show you a song that I already showed Body and Soul, but this time I will show you how Django played it because I got a comment there that I should show this one maybe because uh, I have, I'm having a, obviously a Django guitar channel so the chords <coughs> that Django played are slightly different from the chords that I usually played the first difference when you try to um, play along with the recording session is that it's probably in a different key and sometimes the key pitch is so much changed that you can't even really figure out if it's in E minor or an F minor. So first of all let's have a look at the regular chords. It starts like my heart is sad and lonely. So in the jungle version when we play it in the same key in E flat minor it would be like this. My heart is sad and lonely. happens is that he leaves out some chords and plays also a different chord in one place. Instead of playing E flat minor, B flat 7 and E flat minor, he plays only E flat minor. My heart is sad. And then he switches to A flat dominant 7. Lonely. This is very simple. So the chords that I'm using here you can play, I will show the tune in E flat, but notice that I think concerning the pitch uh, on the recording, it, it's probably in E minor, so half, uh, half step up. But I will show it anyway in E flat minor, so that you also see the differences to the original version if you want to practice it and compare it to my first video. So we have E flat minor like this, then I switch to A dominant 7, A flat dominant 7. You can play the bar chord or that one. That one would be a typical gypsy jazz voicing. Pretty tricky to do. The thump is playing the A flat. And then you have um, this very normal dominant seven chord with an E string. And then you've got the first finger on the D string playing G flat. Then you've got a C with the ring finger and an E flat with the middle finger. And then the pinky is playing the fifth. So there is almost no difficult a difference between that chord and the bar chord, except for the top note. The top note of the bar chord would be the root, A flat, and the top note of this voicing would be the fifth, which is a bit more, uh, it's a bit softer and a bit more pleasing, I think, to my mind. So another chord that's often played in gypsy jazz for a dominant chord is this one, or even this one with thumb in the bass and this is mu this is similar to that bar chord when you have the A flat dominant 7 bar chord and you double the 7 with the pinky this is a quite common chord that you might know from blues music but in that uh, in that style we don't play the 7 here on the D string we don't play it as a, bar as a bar chord it's possible you can do it but the chord that a lot of gypsy jazz players play is this so the thumb is playing the root again, the middle finger is playing fifth and root at the same time, so the sixth fret E flat and again A flat, then the first finger is performing C and uh, in that case the pinky is playing G flat. So you can also leave out the thumb, just play this chord, it's also absolutely fine. So my heart is sad and low. For example, like this. So now the next two chords are exactly the same than in the original real book version or in the in the in the typical um, versions of all the singers from Sarah Vaughan, whatever, Billy Holiday, Ella Fitzgerald, D flat major. And um, as a gypsy jazz player, I would prefer this voicing where my middle finger is playing two two notes at the same time, A flat and D flat while the first finger is playing F and B flat and the ring finger is playing E flat and A flat. So you can play this chord, this chord and voicing over all six strings which gives it a nice crunchy sound. And after that I would play G flat 6 9 
This is very similar to that A flat seven. You have the thumb here in the bass. Again, middle finger is playing fifth and root again. Again, the third is playing by the first finger. But instead of playing the seven now, we play with the ring finger, the six and the nine. And again, if this is too hard for you, a lot of players uh, have problems with the thumb up here. But let me say that this is really a question of getting used to it. Um, you can do this even on a classical guitar. I can do it on a classical guitar. And I have very small hands. Sometimes players say, like, yeah, my hands are too small. I have very small play hands for a guitar player. And um, uh, actually, this is not really an excuse. There is a video of Prince playing Purple Rain, where Jennifer Batten is playing guitar. And she got really these small hands, and she's performing the at nine bar chords, even in the, in the second fret. and. She has no problems with that. So it's just a matter of training and um, and sometimes it's a matter of, you know, changing habits because when you played classical guitar for a long time and you stick to the bar chords, I mean, it's no problem to learn the other chords too, you know. I mean, I'm a jazz player, but of course I could also play everything with bar chords, you know. It's just a matter of which style you're playing and what sound you want to achieve. And it has also to do with the drive of the right hand, you know, when you play very... Um, exhausting rhythm guitar that needs a lot of endurance and power then it's a very good idea to play all the chords in that position and to um, to make it effortless and to you know spare your energy somehow so this is why I suggest learning the thumb position here but you can also just play these it would be possible with a bar chord when you mute the A string or if your ring finger is playing both strings, this is hard for me, actually, I never do this. But then you can also play it with a bar chord. And um, to avoid the root up here, I would just mute this string. Of course, you can then bend your pinky and then you have the same chord. But it's for me, this is harder because of the double um, ring finger. Bending the pinky is not a problem for me, but this is something that really some people can't do. I mean, bending the pinky also like this, some players can't do it, and then you gotta find different solutions like, you know, um, yeah, for example, what can you do? So, Django, for example, he did, um, when he played this voicing, which is typical for gypsy jazz, um, shall I show this now? Yeah, yeah. For example, bending the pinky can also be, for example, in that case, done like this. Then you bend the ring fingers, stuff like that. But let's go back to body and soul. So we got... My heart is sad and lonely For you I cry Or if you can't do this, cry For... Now we're at F minor You dear only and you can also, instead of going to that very common F minor 7 down here of the bar chord, you can also go up and play it here like this jazz minor 7. I would suggest to do that. Because it's flowing to the E minor chord, uh, to the E dim, dim chord better than. So I play F, 8th fret on the A string, then the first finger is playing A flat, and then you got. Um, E flat and again the third again A flat and then you move this one to E dim this is the pretty normal dim chord with E B flat D flat and G and then jump in the original version now um, there would come this bass movement with E flat minor with D flat in the bass and then C half diminished and F sharp but instead of that Django, in the Django version, it's just E, ma e flat minor, minor, or E flat minor 7 if you like. And then to A, A flat dominant 7, the one that we had before, or you can play it like this if you don't like the thump. A dim, this is with A, A string muted, F sharp, C, and then the first finger is performing a bar chord. And then we go to. B flat minor seven, no E, no E seven nine, just B flat minor seven, and then one stroke of E flat minor seven and one stroke of A flat dominant seven to the tonic D flat major. So the whole A would be like this. 
my oh, I will take the bar chord. My heart is sad and lonely for you. I cry for you, dear, only. Why haven't you seen it? I'm all for you, body and soul. And then we play a, a, a chord form of B. Uh, B flat dominant seven to go back to the E flat minor. I like this voicing. I play this very often. You know? Also, when you play pom, that sounds very good because it's a very bassy voicing. So, and this is A, and A is repeated, of course, again. So quick, like you know. For the A flat now, let me say this very short. I did a two five. That's pretty common in gypsy jazz. After the E flat minor seven, I just played this one, and this could be explained as A flat dominant seven with A in the with A in the bass with the with A in the bass. But it could also be explained as an A dim chord. But it's more like this is more like a bass movement, and it's really like E flat minor and A flat dominant seven, and this. Flat nine in the bass, A is more like a is more like a bass movement. You could also play the E flat minor with B flat in the bass. And there you go. Like this. So then we're heading for part B with an A dominant seven chord, no matter what kind of A dominant seven chord, all the possible forms that we have. And now part B is really funny because in the real book version, this is very complicated. When you listen to the singer's version uh, beyond gypsy jazz, they usually play like D, So there's a complicated chord movement from D major 7 to E minor 7, F sharp minor 7, and then we got a falling progression with G minor 7, C, F sharp minor 7, B, then E minor 7, A and D, this is very much. And in the jungle version this is very funny, he only plays 1-5. Just D and A all the time. So you can play, this is very fine, also just the normal bar chord and also just the major chord, but of course the D6 lines also work. Any chord form that you know for A. Sometimes I play the A7 13 or in generally a 13 chord with the root on the E string like this. Also, it's a question of effort, you know. This is very easy to me. I have the thumb here, the A string is muted, and then I got first finger on the seven, third with the second finger, and pinky on the 13. So, and then the rest of it is pretty much the same than in the original version. So we got D minus seven, G, again I play G13 with G sharp in the bass, C, six, nine, and then a dim chord. And instead of the E flat dim, you can you can you can make use of that uh, of the fact that you can just um, move the dim chord around in minor thirds uh, and play after the C six nine C dim. And then uh, this is like the, the, let me play the whole B one time like. dominant 7 flat 13 I'm using this kind of octatonic voice with the 7th in the here A flat then I got the third of B flat is D 
um, G flat and B flat. And I'm doubling the root with the thumb in the bass. So we got C dominant, B dominant, and then last A, the same than all A's before. So if it's really, if you want to play it in the key of E minor or even F minor, I'm not really sure because the Django records are like, you know, you know what I'm talking about. They are not really in pitch and I didn't check, but if you want to play it in E or F, you just have to move it up, you know, a uh, one fret or two frets, you know, that's not a problem at all. So maybe you play like, <laughs> not a problem and um, yeah this was body and soul like Django played it and there are some more standards where he really changing where he's really changing the chord and my thoughts concerning this is that they probably learned these tunes like we learn tunes today sometimes you know when we want to play a tune with any of my bands and even also with bands that play a lot and you know it's even when I sometimes practice tunes with Joshua Stefan uh, I would just listen to the tune and then like yeah okay that's it. And sometimes we change a chord or say, okay, let's play this progression a bit differently. I think that's how Django also did it. He probably listened to any recording and just said like, yeah, but I like this chord more, I like this chord more. The basic thing is it, of course, it has to fit the melody and all other kinds of reharmonization, simplifying or um, not simplifying the other way around, making things more complex concerning the harmonic aspect, all these things, uh, yeah, you're free to do whatever you like, you know, but I like at, at, the, at Django Reinhardt's music, what I really like is that they often play a very straight and easy chord form. And to my mind, when you write things down in any kind of fake book or real book, sometimes it's too complicated, you know, you should really stick to the basics. So this was Body and Soul, like Django played it. I hope you like it. If that helped you, subscribe to my channel. There are more than 100 videos concerning lead guitar, rhythm guitar, lots of chord lessons and some performances with players and bands that I'm on tour with. And um, my name is Sven Jungbeck. I hope you liked it. See you soon. Bye.